we just got back from a five, six day trip. Uh, we drove about seven hours away, stopped in Memphis, Tennessee, spent five days there and drove home. And it was a very different type of trip than we've done in the past. Uh, normally, if you, there's, I've got multiple videos on here about our summer road trips. We drive every summer all the way out to Utah. It's 30 hours one way. 30 hours back, we do it in three days, typically three 10 hour driving days, which means like 15 hour days on the road. It's really intense and we've really built up our muscles for you know, that style of driving. Not that it doesn't take so much out of us and typically sometimes maybe even brings out the worst in us, but uh, we decided to try something new of going with my husband. He had a conference in Memphis. So we drove there seven hours, one day, stopped part way and then stayed in a hotel and came back. So what I want to share with you today are some tips, some things we learned, the things that I reflected on after this trip that I want to use and take with me moving on to our next family adventure. And you can take these tips maybe directly or apply them, scale them up, scale them down for your own family adventures. Because I think it's something that you know, for us, it's, it's something that's part of our family culture, having these adventures together, and they take a lot of effort, they take a lot of work. And so uh, this part of the process, this very end is one of the most important steps, I think, in the family adventure process, so that you can keep doing them. So I'm going to walk with you through my thought process today, so that you can do it yourself for your own adventures. Hi, I'm Jessica Jackson, and this is the new way to thrive in motherhood by leaning into who you are, what you love, your unique family situation and personal mission to create a life that you actually want to live. I want to invite you to join me in saying no to the life of the exhausted supermom, burnout, victim thinking, being pulled in so many directions, suffering through survival mode, or being lost in motherhood, and say yes to building strong families and moving forward on our greatest goals in order to create a fulfilling life that we are excited to wake up to each day and become a soaring mother. This is the Thriving in Motherhood podcast. The most important thing when we are doing these family adventures, in my mind, is to start with this thought of this is going to be a grand experiment, okay? I'm going to gather data. I know some things are going to go well and I know some things are not and I'm just here to observe it all and see what's working and what's not and then we can tweak it and we can change it. If I go in with any other attitude or mindset than that, I know <laughs> that I'm going to be very disappointed that I'm going to have expectations that are too high and they're going to be dashed. So I like to go in hopefully with a very um, neutral feeling about what we're about to experience together so that I can actually enjoy what's happening instead of being disappointed about what's not. Number two, food. Okay, it doesn't matter whether you're on the road or you're at home or you're in a hotel, food is like the number one thing that we keep doing all day long, even though sometimes I wish we didn't need it. So here's what worked really well for us on this trip. Day one, no big deal. We're used to packing for road trip food. We packed, you know, the carrots and the grapes and the apples and sandwiches and plan on eating one meal out. So that's our typical thing. Oh, and I make baked oatmeal. That's what we do on a road trip. I make either baked oatmeal or oatmeal cookies, um, breakfast cookies, I guess we call them, that have oatmeal in them. And then we eat that for breakfast while we're driving on the road, just save some time, saves cleanup. Uh, meal two, we eat sandwiches, produce, and something fun, my kids love veggie straws. So that's a road trip special thing and goldfish crackers. We don't really eat those day to day life. So they got them on the road trip, makes it fun. And then third, we stopped at Chick or Chipotle because I've shared this before, but we love just getting two entrees and a whole bunch of tortillas and we can feed our family for 20 bucks, $22. They just raised the prices. Um, which is incredible. And like everyone feels really full, which is so hard to do at, when you're eating out for 20 bucks for six people. So that is our favorite hack there. Um, so that went great. That's a really good road tripping day for us. The hotels, uh, blessing and curse is hotel breakfast. I feel like they take forever. So that was one thing I observed, like breakfast just took an hour because everyone's getting their things and they're people watching and it just takes a long time, which on one hand is great because I'm like, this is an activity, we're killing time. On the other hand, I'm like, this is just taking a long time. And for a moment, it's a long time to manage all the things. But expectations are set. Just takes an hour to eat breakfast in a hotel. Uh, then we did a packed lunch every day. So we brought bread. We bought peanut butter and jam. We had a little fridge, but nothing else. I packed a popcorn maker, like just one that you can plug into the wall. 
and brought, we got kernels so we could have an easy snack in the hotel room. Was it a little bit messy? Yes. Was it still really nice to have something? Yes. Uh, apples, bananas, oranges. We kind of just lived off that. I felt like we were a little bit hungry during the middle of the day time. That was a little tough. And then dinners, we struggled. So we tried doing some like Memphis type specialty restaurants. It was kind of a bust. Uh, then we went back to like, you know, I don't know, Chick-fil-A and Papa John's because the kids are familiar with them. But we were just kind of hungry a lot on this trip and didn't love, you know, like nobody felt good. Even my kids are like, we just want spinach. <laughs> so we all felt a little bit off on this trip when it came to food. And so I think one of the things we reflected on is that we would get, bring our Instapot for the hotel. I hope that's okay. We bring the Instapot in the hotel. And so we could cook something, even if it's just like, dump taco soup you know, or something uh, that we could have like a meal that we prepare ourselves. It's a little more filling, a little more familiar um, and just provide one of our meals for the day. So that is, you know, I don't know, maybe our solution to that problem. When you're living in a hotel, tricky thing is that you're kind of on public display all the time with your children. I knew going into this, I would still need a quiet time, a moment in the day. I would really like a power nap. I didn't get a power nap every day, but I got it some of the days. And I knew that we wouldn't want to keep some of our like general daily rhythm and have a lot of time outside of the hotel after, you know, in between breakfast and lunch and quiet time and dinner, because I was not going to have, I had no interest in staying in that small space for very long. So, for the quiet time, let's talk about that. I went to the dollar store and I got some coloring books, some activity books, some workbooks, some Play-Doh, which was actually awesome. I was worried of like minorly, but it was fantastic. Um, and it made sure that the kids had something that they could do that was novel, that they didn't know was coming, didn't know what it was, that would occupy them for 20 minutes so I could just power nap. And they, we brought the Kindle, they had audiobooks. That's what we use the Kindle for, just audiobooks. So we listened to audiobooks, they had their quiet time, it gave us all just a moment to reset. The other thing I didn't anticipate is that when they woke up in the morning, they could go get those things that they had had from the day before that maybe they hadn't finished and do it in the morning while everyone's, you know, getting ready in one bathroom or in the evening as we're getting ready for bed and people are quieting down and again, just taking time to change and brush teeth and do all those things. They had an activity to do in the evening. So that was a huge win. If anything, I would be more strategic about bringing more stuff, not loads more stuff, but more stuff. Because even though we did get 20 minutes in the middle of the day, I could have used a little bit more sometimes. So that was a win. It was an experiment. I wasn't sure if we would need it. And it's something that I would dial up if we're doing a hotel trip again. Let's talk about leaving the hotel. What do you do? So we're pretty frugal. We want to buy and spend on experiences, but we also don't want to do that all the time. So I first started looking at the weather. Now this obviously is variable and like maybe 50% accurate, but it still kind of gave me an idea that it was going to be not miserably cold, but it was going to have probably some rain involved and we would also have some like not rain. But so I knew I wanted a really good mixture of outdoor and indoor opportunities for us. And I knew I wanted some free and some not free. So um, the first thing we did was found the most iconic thing in the city, which is the Civil Rights Museum, which was phenomenal. This is not a plug for Memphis, but if you go to Memphis, that is a place to go. It was incredible and powerful and a humbling experience to be on the spot where Martin Luther King was assassinated. So that was a really amazing experience. So glad we did that. Um, so look at the museums in your town. I would say that first. In the town you're going, check. We love museums. We love historical museums. We love art museums. Um, we love children's museums. So I looked at those places first and the science centers. This time we did a children's museum because I knew we had a rainy day on the forecast. And I was like, okay, it's 86 bucks for all of us, but we could stay there the entire day. And this museum had indoor activities, outdoor activities, art center, play area, move your body area, imaginative play, like stores and doctor's offices. So I knew there was gonna be a large variety that would keep the kids and I occupied the entire day. So that was like a one day knocked out. And as I'm planning these two, I'm, I know like in my family, we can do one thing in the morning that's bigger and maybe one thing in the afternoon, but more than that would be crazy. And less than that could be okay, especially when we slotted in like a park. Like, so one thing is just like purely kids run play, don't have to even think about it as a parent, like going to a park, we would do that one morning. And then the afternoon we would go do a museum. So I kind of mix it up that way. Another thing that we used heavily a couple times was Groupon. So Groupon, you, 
like didn't have all the museums that we went to, but it had quite a few of them and it was an incredibly steep discount both times that we used them, like tremendous savings. So that's a great tip when you're looking for things, go look at Groupons and see what deals there are. There's probably other deal options out there. Those ones just came up really easily when we searched for them on Google. Also, we looked at the things that we would normally do in our town anyway. So I found the public library and we went and spent an afternoon in the children's museum or in the children's section of the library. I read books to myself, like I, they had books for me too, right? So I was reading books in the library. My kids read books in the library. I read books with them. They played with some of the games there. Like we just had a lovely low key afternoon and we needed that. Like after going into a museum and taking in all of this amazing history about cotton and the cotton center of America, it was fascinating. But then it's nice to be able to balance that out with something else. We also um, went to parks, so many parks. Um, we would spend, we went to a number of different ones, like drove to some cool ones. There, there's so many amazing parks in Memphis. We were very impressed, but we would just spend an afternoon at one park, a morning in another, and just got our kids to places where they didn't have to be constantly corrected by us, which was really nice. Something that really took us off guard, took me off guard, which is I literally had no time where I wasn't with the kids. We went to bed together, we woke up together. Like sometimes in the past when I had really little kids, I would wake up early in the morning and be able to work in the bathroom. Nope, we were all waking up at the same time, going to bed at the same time together, except for that 20 minute power nap that I got, except for some days it was like two minutes before someone came and tapped on my shoulder because we're like, you know, two beds away from each other. Um, that I like got pretty burned out after five days. I don't think we need loads of times by ourselves, but like no time to recharge was starting to wear me out. And so on the last night, my husband's like, oh, I will take the kids. Cause he was working, right? So this was part of the plan. But on the last night he took the kids just so I could go walking for 15 minutes in the town. And honestly, I ran into something so cool. I like called him and I was like, just kidding, bring the kids. This is gonna be really fun. And so we found some stuff on the street to do that night. But um, even that 15 minutes like really recharged my batteries. And so as we were reflecting, if we go on a big trip like this, we'll be a little bit more proactive about me just having a few minutes or Andrew taking the kids for an hour or two, just like we do at home. Um, but applying that principle on vacation as well so that I can keep my stamina going as fully engaged as you are on a trip with your whole family, which is totally awesome, but also that would be helpful. Public transportation was a huge hit uh, for us. It was, one, it was practical because then you have to worry about parking as you're going around to different places. Like it just takes one more piece of the puzzle that you don't have to worry about. But two, it's a really fun activity. The kids loved getting on and riding the trolley there, learning how to use the tickets, learning how to follow the map, use the system, pull the bar to let them know when you want to get off. Like it was a really fun experience. And something that Andrew and I really prioritize is empowering our kids to navigate the places that we're in. That's something that's a priority to us. And so, um, we're doing it on a small level when they're little, but that is something that we're intentional about. And also again, it's fun. And we can get a day pass for just like, I think it was a few dollars each. So it was very economical and was less than probably parking if we had been driving around to these different places. Include your kids in the entire process. I have, you know, if you've been watching my episodes, I am not feeling great right now. I didn't have loads of energy. There was no way I could be superwoman on this. So we were leaving on a Tuesday. On Friday, my daughter spent the morning using Canva to create a packing list for our family. I sat down with her, we wrote it out on paper. She typed it all up. She created all the boxes. That was fantastic. It was a great morning. She got to learn a tool and the packing list was created. Then we were able to wash the clothes together, clean out the car. I had everyone help me vacuum things up. We just set a timer. We went fast, because it can drag, cleaning cars can take hours if you let it, but I just started, tried to set a timer, had everyone help me quick clean, quick vacuum. I had everyone help me prep the food. We kind of came up with a plan together, loaded things up. Um, I had everyone pack their own clothes. I was definitely there supervising for my younger kids, my oldest daughter, now I'm still helping her too. But we had her packing list. The brain part was pretty much done and I could just help them walk through it. But I didn't do this by myself. I made sure they were very a part of each step of the process. And part of that was because if they were working with me, we might be going slower, but they probably were undoing something behind me or creating a new project of their own, right? We were all kind of going in the same direction together. And two, I really wanted them to own this trip. I want the trip not just to be fun for them and have me totally burned out, which happened a little bit at the end, 
But then I remember to ask for help. I was like getting so frazzled and frantic at the end when I was like trying to pack up the hotel room and I was starting to get like really annoyed and the kids were just going crazy. And then I was like, oh yeah, I can ask him to help. And I was like, hey, you come, actually I didn't call him that, but you know, hey, come load the fridge for me. Unload the fridge, put everything in the cooler. I need you to go empty out the bathroom. I need you to, you know, I don't know. Oh, probably, oh, pack up the popcorn maker. Those are the, you know, and I just started assigning them tasks. And so learning to, especially as you have kids that are starting to get older, you know, you don't just have the like four and unders, but you're starting to have a five-year-old, a six-year-old starting to step out of the, like you're doing everything, but instead starting to manage what's happening and invite them into the process. Because when they own it, one, they have a place. It feels great. They love contributing. They love being a part of it. They love owning the trip. And two, it increases your capacity to be able to do more things together. And, and it becomes part of a whole, a whole family process that was really fun and includes everyone. Plus they're learning so many skills along the way. My last tip, which I've kind of alluded to, but want to directly address because this is something we're intentional about, is try and keep similar rhythms to what you do at home. So even though we were on the road and we were traveling, we still kept Friday night is our pizza and movie night. We bought Papa John's. The kids still got to watch a show. They weren't watching TV any of the other days of the week, um, but they still watched the show on Friday night. And that just, again, it's just something that they can understand and rely on. During the day, we had, you know, the same bedtime routine. I read stories to everyone at night. We sang a song before they went to bed. We said our prayers. In the morning, we got up and we read scriptures together in the hotel room while we were waiting for breakfast to open because we were in a different time zone and we woke up really early. But again, it's that peg, the same thing we do. We came back to the hotel room every day in the middle of the day for quiet time because everyone's used to having rest and read time to be able to listen to the story, to just calm down, to do something creative with your hands. So we tried to keep those basic anchors in our day and the anchors in our week still there. So it just helped the kids know what to expect. It helped me know what to expect. And I didn't feel like we were starting over from scratch for the whole week and just throwing everything to the wind. I think that we could have brought in a few more daily habits. So like I was still doing some basic exercise in the hotel room and the kids would join me. Um, still did a basic scripture study. The kids brought their journals, but we didn't really use them because everyone just went to bed. Like we were all so tired every night. Normally you've got kids that will stay up and read for hours, but everyone just like passed out most nights because we had such full days. Um, but yeah, the general day flow is good. When it comes to reflecting on your own trips, I'm sharing kind of my reflections, things that I'm learning. And some of these tips will be directly applicable to you and some of them won't be. But here's the thing, just going through this process of like, hey, I wanna go do something that's new and probably hard because it's new and because you're doing it in a group setting. Um, and they requires energy. It requires increase, you know, like you to increase your capacity. And I think that's a great thing. I think it's so wonderful to put ourselves out there and do something hard and create memories with our kids. And it's probably gonna push you past your limits. We got pushed past our limits some of the days, some of the times I came home like totally done and that's okay, but I think pausing now and reflecting, taking in the information, seeing this went well, this didn't go well, and using that, talking about it with Andrew, talking about it with the kids, coming up with a game plan so that our next adventure can go just that much better. We're going for just a little bit better next time uh, with a little bit more information, a little more practice. Everyone knows a little bit better what to expect. And I think that's the key to the success, to be able to keep doing things that are hard and challenging um, as a family is to take the time to reflect on them, to celebrate what went well, remember the good times. Now we, we keep talking like, oh, remember this? Like, this was so fun. We love doing this. That trip is so fun. So instead of dwelling on the hard stuff, because there were really hard stuff, there was also really amazing things. And my little girl was like, the trip was absolutely perfect. And all of my kids, it was a perfect trip. So the kids had a great time, even though it was a ton of work for us. Come back, reflect what went well, what didn't go well. Why did I lose my mind on those days that were really hard? What was, what was the trigger for that? How could we mitigate that? What were the problems, pain points? How could we solve them? How could we make it easier next time? How can I involve the kids more and more and more so that I'm doing less, not because you want to, you know, just so things stay balanced and nice and you're teaching them skills and they can be, and this can be a sustainable 
thing for you and your family to go do great experiences together, to have it be part of your family culture, to have it be part of how you learn and grow together and bond and have shared memories. So I hope that as you do hard things so that you can have great experiences, that um, you can just learn how to reflect and improve so you can keep doing it and having a great experience along the way. So have a great week. I want to take just a moment and share a free gift that I've created for you called Three Secrets to Do More of What You Love Without Hiring a Babysitter. This workshop is available for you to go watch right now and start taking action on so that you can do more of what you want to do, more of what's on your heart, more of what is important to you. Um, with your children at home. You don't have to wait for them to be in school or for you to have loads of time. There are ways to start moving forward right now. And you can check that out at thrivinginmotherhoodpodcast.com slash workshop.